Hello and welcome back to the shop. And as you can tell by this title, um, we got a bridge port. So now there is a there's a little bit of a backstory to this. Um, about let's say maybe about a month ago, maybe a little bit longer, um, I was contacted by uh, one of my viewers who is local to me. Uh, his name is Roger. I don't want to use his last name because I didn't I didn't ask him if I could, um, but uh, he said that he has, um, in addition to having a couple of lathes, he had two bridge ports. One of them he's had for a while, and uh, it was in pieces, and he had received it in pieces. Um, and he said that he was up in his shop, and he kind of wanted to get it out of there. It was kind, it was taking up space, and um, you know he wasn't going to put it together. And he had no real use for it. So he decided to uh, send it on to me and the channel, um, which is an amazingly generous offer. And this is a full bridge port, no BS. Everything's with it, or 99.9% .9 of it, it's with it. I took an inventory. I'm just missing a couple of tiny, tiny things, which are basically just screws and stuff. Um, but it, 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 it's an absolutely super generous offer. Um, and, you know, I, I can't thank him enough. So, um, we're going to have a series of putting this lathe, putting this lathe, uh, taking this mill, cleaning it, putting it all back together again. Uh, right now it's outside uh, in the truck. I'm waiting for a couple of guys to come here with an engine hoist. And um, we're going to get it in the house. I may or may not film it, depending on how much of a pain in the ass it is. I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit of a pain, but um, I'm pretty sure we can handle it. So now there is a backstory to this lathe. Uh, I keep calling it a lathe and it's not a lathe. There is a backstory to this mill. Um, this mill uh, came out of Harvard University, came out of the physics department, the cyclotron lab. And you guys can actually just look it up, just type in Harvard University cyclotron lab. And uh, basically this was one of the machines that was used to help build and maintain uh, the cyclotron that they built. Now a cyclotron is basically a particle accelerator that they use for physics research and then later on was used in uh, radiation therapy. And I believe, I'm not quite sure, I, I mean I, I read I read through a few articles. I think they stopped using that this particular cyclotron in 2002 it was decommissioned. I'm almost positive. I'm not, don't quote me on that, but you guys can look it out. So this this lathe has a little bit of provenance to it. Um, so we're not going to do much to the outside of this. Um, it still has, you know, the Harvard University stickers on it and everything else like that. So basically we're just doing a cleanup and an operational check of the mill. We're not going to, we're not going to strip down every single pot. We're not going to repaint it. Every scratch and everything that's in it is staying right where it is. But we are going to give it, uh, you know, a, a good, 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 thorough cleaning. Uh, I'm going to take apart whatever parts are easy to take apart. I'm going to check all the bearings in it. I'm assuming I don't have to replace anything. Um, if we do, I will, but we're not going to replace it just because. Uh, the head itself was supposedly rebuilt, so until I get that onto power, I uh, can't really test that out until, I mean, I can turn the spindle by hand and it turns and everything feels fine, but we really can't test out the head until I get this sucker under power. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to do a tear down of that head unless I absolutely have to. Uh, you know, it's not something I want to be getting into if I really, really don't have to. So if the bearings in that sound fine once we start it up, she's staying right where it is. Um, so we're going to get it out of the truck. I'll show you what it looks like outside. And then uh, we'll kind of get it down here and we'll start doing a cleanup and a fit up and inventory of what we got going on. So uh, give me a few minutes, or give me a, probably a couple hours, and uh, we'll truck this thing in here and we'll see if I still have a back left. Well, here it is. This is the ultimate viewer appreciation gift. And this is a Bridgeport Mill. So there's the column. There's the knee. 
Now, I was contacted by a, general, a local viewer uh, of my channel who has had this for a while in this exact condition that you see it uh, in pieces. And um, he pretty much needed it out of his shop. And he wasn't going to sit there and put it together. So he decided to send it along to the channel and me to make use of it. And obviously put it together. So we're still in really good shape. Now this mill was actually has a has some history to it. It was used and uh, it was actually taken taken from uh, Harvard Labs, Harvard University, and used in the cyclotron lab uh, to help build and maintain the cyclotron. The cyclotron was was a giant particle accelerator that they used for physics research and also later on in uh, radiation therapy, nuclear medicine things like that so it's had a hand and all of that so you see everything's still attached to the knee the only thing we need another uh, one shot boiler uh, casing there not a, not a big thing so you can still see on the knee here scraping marks he's a little dirty but the rest of it the build your own Bridgeport kit is in the back of the good old truck so we get the rams here this goes on top of the base the ram attaches to that in the back that you may or may not be able to see right there is uh, the table attaches to there's the table with a power feed attached that in the very back corner is for um, the knee that mounts to the to the um, to the base and the feed screw for the knee goes through there and obviously there's a table that's a power feed trip bar and back there is the is the head and actually on the back of that head is a um, is a sticker that says Harvard Cyclotron Labs on it and we'll get all a better picture and everything of this here when we get it downstairs um, I took out the little bits I have already downstairs there's a DRO that goes with this there's a Bridgeport light uh, I have all the the um, the hand wheels and everything, those are already downstairs. They were in big boxes. Bunch of hardware that I, that I need to clean up. And uh, actually uh, a vice on this. I don't know what the name is on. It looks like a Kurt clone. It's not a Kurt vice color. And then where it's not blue, it looks like it was black. Um, but it's a Kurt style vice. And it looks to be in pretty good shape. I'll be a little bit dirty. I cleaned some gunk out of it last night. Okay, so we got everything in. And yes, it was a pain in the ass. So, obviously the hardest to get in here was the base. And the problem with that was that we had to, um, from where we were sitting on the trailer, we actually had to lean it back and we had to flip it around so that this, this uh, tab here, this base, was pointed up to be able to get it in. Uh, bottom first and it's very very it's actually very sturdy it's very um, low center of gravity so to try to get that to flip back without it going out of control using you know a couple of guys in uh, one of these lifts these little engine hoists was kind of a challenge so the biggest problem was getting this down here but we managed to do it um, knee not so much we strapped right through lifted that up um, the ram was really easy we just strapped right on the bottom uh, that guy we carried down that guy we carried down and the table we carried down just because it was long and awkward and uh, we also carried down the uh, head which is over here so here's the head <clears throat> everything looks okay on it we just used the strap to get it out of the bed of my truck and then uh, we carried it down the stairs and carried it over here and everything looks really good on it you know it's the uh, one horse three phase deal um, doesn't look like any issues or anything there everything looks nice and where it should be uh, just want to probably get you guys a look at this here I don't know if it'll come in too well but you see right there, it says Harvard University Physics Department Cyclotron Lab. 
So obviously that's where this was. And you could kind of tell here. Oh, there's some paint missing here, so it was rubbing up against something. And I don't think that happened in my truck or when we were getting it down. Um, could have been in a low ceiling, but I have low ceilings here anyway. So, you know, this is going to just... we. I measured it, and it will just clear uh, my ceiling. And my plan for putting it will be between these two columns here. So back to back with the lathe here and mill here. And that gives a walkway from there around to washer and dryer. Um, what else have we got going on? We have the original Bridgeport power feed here, which we're actually gonna try out. I'm gonna plug this in and see if this works. We have uh, the DRO is over here. So I'm gonna plug that in and see if that works. Original Bridgeport light. Um, we have some of the end fittings here for the table, that's the table feed screw, that's the y-axis screw, I don't know what that plate is, but we'll find out. Uh, I also have some extra pots here, it looks like another quill handle, or another handle or something, I got two handles for the knee, I got an extra ball crank handle here, I also have um, two of these, which I'm assuming is the pinion for the ram. Um, I think I have two of them. One has a handle, one does not. I have uh, another dial here. I'm not sure what this is going to at the moment. It might be the other side of the table. I'm not sure. Um, that looks like a table lock. This looks like part of the actual head. Um, could possibly be part of the, the um, quill feed. Uh, possibility. Not quite sure what those are. Um, those are the end caps. And then here's the, the nut for the z-axis which sits into this the tube. This is the uh, trigger for the table. A couple more bronze nuts which I'm sure are for one of the table feeds or some sort. Uh, drawer bar right here, a couple of Gibbs, actually three, one, two, three. Um, we have a, I took, I took the uh, vice all apart, started to clean that. Have a whole big bag of um, nuts and bolts here. There's one thing though, I'll open this up. I'm not quite sure what these are. Uh, I'm sure they might hold a felt of some sort. I have I have the rebuild book for this um, this mill here. And I'm also not quite sure what this guy is, but there are two of them in here. So I'll find that out. So for right now, uh, I'm gonna get an extension cord and I'm gonna see. Well, first I'm gonna take this cover off here. I know lighting on this side isn't as great, but. You know, take this cover off here and make sure that all the wires are still intact. Then we're actually going to hook up the feed and just see if it works. Okay, so we got a uh, little fuse here that did make the transition. Uh, that sucker broke, so we just jumped out the fuse for the time being um, to see what happens here. And uh, everything else in there looks intact. We're going to plug it in and uh, we'll see what happens. So we're plugging it into a GFI. So it should be well protected. Everybody close your eyes. Indicator lights faulty there. Try reverse. 
Rapid. So this is all good, just needs a little reworking on the innards, get a new fuse, nice new indicator light, definitely a new cord, uh, some of this stuff is a little on the old side and dried out, we'll redo all that, but uh, internally she works. Alright, so testing out the DRO here, I got the scales hooked up, uh, this unit, Dynamic Research Corporation. Um, actually, it's out, they're out of Massachusetts and they still exist. Uh, Wilmington, Mass, which actually is uh, not too far from here. And um, let's see if this. I, I did some research on this and I can't find any kind of manual online. Um, I'd like to get one just to see what the functions are. I mean, granted, this is going to be relatively limited, but I'm pretty sure you can be able to store, uh, you know, like an origin line in there um, and I want to know what these buttons do so if anybody has a, a lead on you know a, a, a manual on this let me know um, this unit's from 1982 it's actually a year older than I am so you're looking at pre Nintendo era electronics you're looking at you know uh, ColecoVision and Television Atari era electronics in this sucker so uh, I'm sure it's fairly limited in what it can do um, but I'd like to uh, you know, figure out exactly what the rest of these buttons are here. Um, and like I said, this company does exist, and during the week I'll probably give them a call and see if I can find something off of this. They'll probably laugh at me, but you know, it's worth a shot. And uh, this is a model 700, uh, two axis. So let's plug her in and uh, see if she lights up. Oh, I heard noise. So, why are we blank? Keyboard on, axis on, axis on, like clear, is it, ah, ah, we got numbers, alright, so let's, yep, look that, there's Y, there's X, X is behind me, Beautiful. So my scales are still working. They feel feel really nice. Um, so like this is step in datum in millimeters and inch. So inches out as inches as millimeters. See, I don't know what these. I'm assuming STO is store, and then if I hit pre, that's previous reading. But to select the axis, you have to unselect this and to be able to clear one, only that only that one, and then if you wanted to clear both, press it on, so, I mean it works, um, I just like to know actually function wise what it can do, so if anybody has any, like I said, any kind of lead on a manual on this guy, um, let me know, email address is in the comments below, or in the uh, description below and at the beginning of this video, so, and I'll probably put it right here for good measure, why not? All right, so uh, let's get the knee in here, and we'll start doing a little bit of inspecting on that and some cleanup, because uh, obviously the knee is, uh, not the knee, but the, the, the entire base and column is the, um, the basis for everything else to sit off of. I know I'm going handheld for most of this stuff just for convenience sake, so I'm sorry if the video is a little bit shaky, but here's the top, and we're still nice and smooth around uh, no real nicks from uh, moving I got like a little bit of a rub there but it's nothing raised and a little bit here but nothing raised uh, we got some battle scars on the back from just from being moved around twice probably from me and from being moved out of its original locations I don't think we did all that I think we did this one and um, those rub marks are from the track that I made out of wood uh, as far as the dovetail goes. They look pretty good. I can still see a lot of scraping all the way down. The only thing I noticed is, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you can see right here to right here. 
kind of a discolored line there and even you know kind of up where it ends you can see a, a paint line like a grayish line there that right there I mean I can catch a fingernail there and on the top here not so much not as bad on this side but I can still do it there so I don't know I don't know what that's all about um, I don't think it'd be anything you know affecting what we're doing with it you know they say this thing isn't in Harvard no more and it ain't going to NASA so uh, I'm gonna clean up take some purple power and some um, white scotch bright which is basically the equivalent of uh, uh, four rot um, steel wool and I'm gonna clean all this up I got one little one little gouge there probably from us moving around actually I think that was from from one of the straps that I had had put her on there because we had strapped a dolly to the back of this and I think that's where the hook might have dug in um, it's not bad though it's not bad at all I could just take a stone gently and just knock that down and see if there are any high spots um, but you can see all the scraping marks there it's in pretty good shape uh, you know you know I'm all dirty dirty mill deal uh, so we'll clean all this up now the, the one thing that I, when I was looking in the rebuild book it said that there's usually a shim on this um, pedestal where the, the bronze nut for the, the z-axis feed goes so I don't have that um, I don't even know if there was one there and I don't know if it's gonna affect anything so it might it might have been over here I'm not sure on this side I don't know if you can see that mark right there it looks different than over here I don't know if that's just corrosion or something that was sitting on this but either way we'll you know we're gonna have to put it together without that but I don't think uh, I don't think it'd be that much of an issue. If anybody knows it'll be an issue, obviously let me know. You know, so we're gonna take some purple power and some Scotch Bright and some water and some towels and see if we can get this guy cleaned up. All right, what we got here is a uh, three to one mix of purple powder to water, which is probably a little bit on the strong side, but you can actually see all the stuff coming right off already. So let's just wipe the dovetail you can already see all the grease and nasties coming off of there it's taking a little bit of the paint with it too I was expecting that so not really worried about it so you can see it's doing a pretty good job there that side compared to that side yeah. so I'm going to clean all this up and we'll come back to it all cleaned up Okay, I got a little bit of the rubbing buff, and uh, you can see how she looks now. I know it looks like a lot of the scraping marks disappeared, but they're not. I just cleaned all the goo gook out from in between them. So you can see scraping marks here. They're really deep there. They're a little bit shallower here, um, but they're definitely present. This is probably where you would do most of your work, somewhere around down here, and all the way down. And the same thing here little bit less in the middle but perfectly acceptable like I said I'm not exactly sure what this these marks here are I'm not quite sure I don't think I'll make that much of a difference and I don't know if you can see inside here with the scraping marks there they're a little worn down right in the middle and uh, pretty strong on the side they're on the the same on the other side of the dovetail and uh, we're pretty much all degreased, cleaned up. This gray paint that's here looks like it's actually, I don't know if that's under or over. That's got to be under. That gray is under. You can see how thick this is. See that there? Those chips taken out of it. Like Bondo or something to make it nice and smooth. That's what that gray is. And the green paint is over that. Like I said, I'm not worried about paint or anything like that. We're just gonna leave her as she is. You know. Would I love to get that all nice and painted? Yeah, probably. But I'll be honest with you. Uh, on something like this, <clears throat> I'd rather leave it the way it is. I mean, it was one thing to do it to the lathe. We shouldn't have a whole lot of paintable surface area. This thing is massive and has a lot of paintable surface area. Uh, and I'd like to keep it the way it is, so.
that's my decision and uh, you know we'll uh, see if we can get this sucker off of that pallet and kind of least placed relatively in here and we'll bring in probably the knee 